Now, today I want to read for you from chapter 2 verses 19 to 24. As you are turning your Bibles, I would love to read from verses 19 to 24, chapter 2 of Philippians. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else who will show genuine concern for your welfare. For everyone looks out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. And I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. Since Paul cannot himself come to Philippi, it is his intention to send Timothy. He calls him as his beloved son in the Lord. As a representative so that he could find out everything in detail about the Philippian church. Now you will see here there was nobody else who was very close to Apostle Paul than Timothy. There are certain times while in the ministry we raise up Timothy's to stand together with us to do the work of God. Demers, who was with Apostle Paul for several years, he suddenly, he left everything and he ran away. Many people who Paul, they hurt him. In one context in Timothy, he says, nobody stood with me except God. But here you see, Paul says very clearly that Timothy is the closest and my own son. Now, we don't know much about Timothy, isn't it? We don't read much about Timothy. But one thing we know about him through Apostle Paul about his loyalty. See, loyal people, I always say, are a rare commodity in the market. To find loyal people is so tough because many are with you but they are like against you. They are not truthfully loyal to you. Back of your mind or back of you, they will go talk things bad about yourself. But remember, Timothy was not like that. He was so loyal to Apostle Paul. We need to raise up loyal leaders in our church, in our churches, who will have only one way of talking, no two tongues. To me, one thing, to another, another thing, or to you, they say one thing, and to somebody else, they talk bad about you. It should not be like that. Every leader, pastor, and believer must be loyal to the leader who has raised them up. And that quality we could 
only see in Timothy. He was, uh, Timothy was um, a native of Derbe or of Lystra. Derbe or of Lystra. His mother's name was what? Eunice. She was a Jewess. And his grandmother's name was Louis. Mother's name Eunice, who was a Jewess. And the grandmother's name was Louis. But his father was a Greek. And the fact that he was not circumcised would seem to show that he was educated in Greek ways. The, the father belonged to the Greek, the mother belonged to the Jewish group. And because of this, in Acts 16, 1 and 2 Timothy 1, 5, Timothy was not circumcised. We have no proper teaching in the Bible about how and when he became or came into Christianity. But in the second missionary journey of Apostle Paul, Paul met him and saw him that he could be used for the work of the gospel or for the kingdom of God. I have seen many a times, I've raised up so many Timothys in my 43 years of this ministry. And very clearly, when I have been traveling all over, I sometimes see young guys and spend time with them, pray with them, and when I see that God's anointing is on them, I immediately tell them. I remember when Pastor Skid was eighth standard, I told him when I met him first time, I said, God wants to use you. So plan your studies towards that. He finished, studied, went to London from Germany, did his, you know, graduation, and he did his studies in the Bible. And now he's a pastor in Germany. To raise up people is very important. But to raise up faithful, loyal people is more important. So Apostle Paul, in the second missionary journey, when he saw Timothy, in the spirit he knew that this guy would be really good for the service of the master. From that time onwards, Paul and Timothy became very close to each other. So Paul could speak of him as his child or son in the Lord. His child or son in the Lord. I would like you to write down the scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. Now, according to Acts chapter 16, verses 1 to 40, Timothy was with Apostle Paul in Philippi. And Timothy was with him in Thessalonica and in Berea. In Acts chapter 17, verses 1 to 14, we can see that. And Timothy was with Paul in Corinth and even in Ephesus. Wow, 
what a journey to go around with apostle paul isn't it so timothy was with him in philippi thessalonica berea corinth ephesus and even with him in the prison in rome i would like you to write the scriptures acts chapter 18 and verse 5 acts chapter 19 verses 21 and 22 now you see here timothy was with him in rome in prison colossians 1 1 and philippians 1 1 now even in the epistles which were written by apostle paul timothy was very closely involved with him so he was associated with paul in the writing of no fewer than five of his letters just imagine five letters when paul wrote timothy also played a role in that which are the books or letters first and second thessalonians second corinthians colossians and philippians these are the five letters that Timothy was associated with apostle Paul in writing and when Paul wrote to Rome Timothy was joined with him in sending the greetings in Romans 16:21 so when apostle Paul wrote to Rome greetings from not only apostle paul but from timothy also so now you know the way timothy was associated with apostle paul my son and i we have a very close relationship even my daughter both of them always tell me dad you are our hero and many times my son keeps telling me dad you just which stood every storm that came against you dad and that one thing you did every day you prayed for 8 9 hours during the crucial moments of your life became the foundation for you to leap to the next level so when my son and i we meet together and sit we call it father and son day or evening we talk about you know the church and the ministry and i keep sharing my experiences with him that as to how the church has to be brought with a lot of prayer and spending time with god and i a lot of times i share with him my experiences in the ministry that's the bonding we have as father and son and so apostle paul was so close to timothy that he was proud of him today when my son preaches and people send me messages saying that pastor sammy did so well on sundays i immediately listen to his messages and i try to finish at least two of his messages but i might go to gym and come back so that i'm excited that's the bonding we have now apostle paul 
was like that with Timothy. He had a close relationship with him. I pray that as leaders and pastors and elders, even as you listen to me, that we will be open to see Timothys who are around us so that we can pick them up and train them into doing the work for the master. Now, Timothy's great use was that whenever Paul wished for information from some church or wished to send advice or encouragement or rebuke and when Paul himself could not go he sent Timothy instead of him. Now Paul used Timothy if he wanted to get any information from some church or he wanted to send an advice or he wanted to encourage the church number four or if he wanted to rebuke the people for the way they were behaving and if Paul found that he could not go he sent Timothy instead of him going there now in first Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 6 you read Timothy was sent to Thessalonica in first Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17 you read that Timothy was sent to Corinth you know about the Corinthian church in first Corinthians chapter 16 verses 10 and 11 you see that Timothy was in Corinth now you see here now Timothy is going to Philippi now this is what the relationship Apostle Paul had with Timothy now understand this at the end you will find in Hebrews 13 23 Timothy also became a prisoner for Christ's sake you see there even Timothy became a prisoner for Christ's sake I'm all excited uh, about teaching you this entire portion I want you to understand many a times we take Christianity means all the time we our prayers are about give me a promotion give me a double blessing all these things are good but the ultimate purpose of our life or our lives it's to serve God if you are a Christian our whole purpose must be through every avenue I must serve my master and once when we understand this basic principle we will do anything for the kingdom of God like Timothy now that's what the way Apostle Paul trained Timothy into the ministry I have taken a lot of my pastors when I used to travel with me and they used to see me ministering and all of them have seen me how I minister pour my life into the people and many a times on when I used to go for power conferences I used to speak like six hours in the in a day and then evening I used to do a crusade 
and my pastors have seen. And some of my pastors who have left me and gone, I'm so happy that they are still in the ministry doing the work of God. See, people can disagree with things and leave you and go. That doesn't mean to say that we are enemies, right? We are all together in this, in this entire battle to take the gospel to our nation. That's our bottom line principle. So people come and sometimes members suddenly leave the church and go away. Years back, I used to feel so offended. But now I don't feel because I always feel maybe their time in our church is over. And now they are going to another place. And I, 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 don't, I don't keep that enmity inside of me about them. No. Thank God for the days they were in FGAG. Now they grew, they were established, they took baptism, they received the Holy Spirit, they got everything, and now they have moved out. It's good that wherever they go, they can be faithful to the kingdom of God. You understand? See, that is the purpose of our lives, to do the work of God. So when Timothy saw, when Paul saw Timothy, he knew that this guy would be a blessing to the kingdom of God. And finally, you see here how Timothy himself became a prisoner for the gospel. What an impact Apostle Paul had in Timothy's life. Just now I was in a Zoom call and the pastor who was talking from Orissa, he said, I'll never forget the year 2007, you came to Orissa, Bhuvaneshwar, and you took me around and prayed for the entire city. He said, even today, I never forget that and my believers won't forget. And he said, because of that, I started to pray like this. I have so many in India and around the world who have seen my life of prayer and fervency for the gospel. They just follow what I'm doing in the ministry of prayer. I'm happy that God has given me a lot of Timothys in the ministry. My dear friends, as I am sharing this with you, I'm sure the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. And the Lord is saying to you, yes, you need to be loyal and faithful like Timothy to Apostle Paul, the one under whom you are growing in Christ. Maybe several of you are watching me belonging to some other place or some other city and you are challenged by the life of Timothy. I pray that you and I will become loyal people in the kingdom of God. Timothy's great use was, as I told you, to bring all types of news and encouragement through Paul to the people. Now you see here, one of the greatest assets of Timothy, you know was what? One of the greatest uh, qualities of Timothy was, he was willing to go anywhere Apostle Paul sent him. There is a group of, uh, there is an organization and for, if you have to join there and become a pastor, first you have to serve the pastor in the church. That means you have to iron his clothes, wash his clothes, polish his shoes, keep his room, bring his breakfast, lunch, dinner. When he finishes preaching, you have to go sit with him and give him coffee, tea, sweep his room. That's the first training they give. 
man that's amazing today's world it's not like that right the associates uh, my associates are i can say all my associate pastors at any time would iron my clothes or help me to do any work but today you see the entire system is changed they think that just going to the bible college and studying and having a bachelor's master's degree they are far above the pastor in courts apostle paul pastor they feel they are far above the pastor who sent them to the bible college that's a very wrong principle we must teach in the bible colleges the students to serve clean the campers sweep swab work hard because in the ministry this is the way your life is going to be your bth and mth nobody will even ask but your attitude towards god and the pastor who sent you is very important in growing in your ministry now when apostle paul called and told timothy go to thessalonica he said i'll go go to corinth i'll go go to philippi i'll go now see here that was the attitude of timothy such a humble and simple spirit timothy had i pray that all leaders and elders who are watching me that you will also start to think and you will say yes i need to change my life and and live for god like timothy in god's kingdom even today senior pastors who are above me who come i serve them i serve them one of my chairmen you know before i became the chairman dr tc george even though my church grew so large and big i used to tie his shoelaces when he comes for a meeting and when he puts his shoes i used to kneel down and tie his legs and he used to hit me and tell why are you doing this you are such a big church i used to tell him sir you are the people who brought me up in the ministry what is wrong for me to kneel down and tie your shoelaces even today i love to serve my senior pastors who have invested their lives into me my dad always used to say when such people come don't put your leg cross and sit you must sit decently that respect today we have lost isn't it a respect for a man of god to a pastor the honor people have lost it but i learned this from timothy's life timothy was a person who was so attached to paul and he knew that he was shaped into this ministry because of paul and he was faithful and loyal see there that's that's i can preach about loyalty but maybe if 10 weeks i have so much materials on loyalty so we need to raise up loyal people under us to be faithful to do the work of god time is flying and i would like to conclude with this and in his hands a message was as safe as if paul had delivered it himself so he was truthful timothy was willing to go anywhere he was very loyal and he was truthful because apostle paul loved him so much because timothy was a person he was very truthful to paul see that's very important isn't it today lot of people tell lies my dad uh, gets mad if you tell lies my dad will say whatever it is tell me the truth i will leave you but don't lie to me and you know apostle paul had such confidence it was almost like apostle paul going when he sent timothy 
because Timothy was truthful. He didn't go and say, oh, my man has sent me like this, but you all don't worry. Somehow I just and go. No, no, no. Paul knew what he said Timothy would say. He didn't compromise on what Paul said. Now, many others would be consumed by selfish ambitions, isn't it? Why should I go and do it? Or if I go and do uh, and tell what Paul said, they may hate me. So they will try to safeguard themselves. But Timothy was not like that. Timothy's one desire, you tell me? Timothy's, what was Timothy's one desire? The one desire Timothy had was to serve Christ and to serve Apostle Paul. Now, that is the beauty of Timothy's life. The right-hand man should be a right-hand man. I have a pastor named Pastor Prakash who has been with me for several years in the ministry. And any time, any day, anything, all the most important functions, in fact, all the functions in my family, I've always invited him and he's been with me because truthfully I know he is a truthful person. He's not a guy who, he has never cheated me in this 35 years, never. And he has never raised his voice and spoken to me even once. Sometimes I'll get mad if things are not done and he'll quietly go and finish it off. And I want to tell you, I pray that every castle leader, elder, will become like this. To be good Timothys to the apostle, to the Lord Jesus Christ, so that your life can become useful for the work of the master. Praise God. I feel good teaching you this. And I pray that God will bless us abundantly this day. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are teaching us to be loyal and faithful to the ones who have poured their lives into us. I pray that you will keep us like Timothy, that we'll be truthful, O oh God. We'll be loyal and we'll be ready to serve the master. Bless every home, O oh God. If anyone is going through troubles and difficult situations, you are the God of miracles. Perform a mighty miracle for thy children. If anyone is looking for a job and they are struggling to get a breakthrough, Lord, when the wind blows, the quails will come. When the wind of the Holy Spirit blows into their lives, the miracles will happen in Jesus' name. Let the people come out of their financial situations. And if people are struggling so much, let them kneel down and pray and ask you to lead them into a different level of maturity in the Christian walk. Bless every home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.